Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Voice in the Hollow. I'm Miguel Ortega and this is my co-host Tran Ma. Hey. Uh, sorry about starting late today, guys, but we had some technical issues on our side. You might actually see our cabinets starting to blink on and on because they're on a different uh, circuit breaker than, uh, than our computer. So anyway, so yeah, this is... Uh, we're showing the weekly uh, a v weekly vlog showing the progress of making an animated film in Unreal 5. Unreal 5 is, what, one or two months old. So uh, you're going to see us go through all the trials and tribulations as we figure out how to use this thing. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, for the past few weeks, we've been working on this sequence, which is, uh, we, we just call it the ceremony sequence. And um, it's got a lot of issues with it. Uh, the big issue that we're having in particular is related to like fire um, and, and particles. So one of the things that is driving us crazy, you can see in like this shot here, which I, I really like this shot, this fire has a line right across the top here. Now, that only happens if I change my default resolution to anything slightly higher. At least that's what I seems like it's the, the culprit so we thought it was attenuation radius we thought it was some light that was maybe clipping it or whatever no it'll sometimes render completely fine and then other times 
uh, if I set it from 1920 to 1080 to 2048 by 1556, which is what we're trying to render everything at, we'll get that just cl uh, clipping out. And you can see that this fire on the side looks completely fine. So that's uh, been a serious pain in the butt. The other issue we've been, we've been having is uh, we were having all the particles not uh, defocus correctly, but you can see we have that all working nicely. Um, let me see, you can see it on some of the shots. So you can see it there, like all this stuff is defocusing nicely. The problem is once it goes completely in focus, uh, the settings that we had to change for the particles to go out of focus correctly now give these long trails when uh, we render them in focus. The problem now is that it works fine out of focus, but not well in focus. I have to figure that out. Um, the fire, for example, looks really bad before. We still have depth of field issues we have to resolve. So we also added uh, this stand here with this mask because that's what the ceremony is about. You can see that everybody here is wearing a mask. Oh, this is another thing. So we added these... Um, Clothing on the drummers. Let me just play the sequence. So we're using the same uh, body for all the men. So it's a little bit confusing when you see it here because uh, another thing is you'll see that he's doing like these weird facial expressions. That's not what it's supposed to be at all. Like where he's, that's the monk here. So you can see. Uh, okay, so this girl is getting uh, initiated into like the hunting tribe and she's being given one of the masks that all the other people have. So the only two people that don't have the masks are the two girls and one of them is about to get it and the other one did not. That's why she's upset and then she's storming out. Um, so yeah, so these two shots were, were finished this week or animated and cleaned up this week. Um, and we're going to light them right now because right now the lighting looks terrible. This one here doesn't have the proper animation on the girl. Um, another thing is it's, it's very subtle, but on all these shots now, this wasn't like this last week, but there's extras on every shot now. So you can see in the background, we have uh, the characters moving around. Uh, we did another motion capture session this week to get some more variation on the extras. And uh, we're working on that right now. So we're gonna have some of them creeping in here uh, from behind just to kind of give the background a little bit more complexity. So yeah, so uh, onto the shots here. So I started lighting this one. Uh, where is it? This one here, I really like how it looks. Turned around. This mask, I, I completely love. So we got to light these two shots. And right now they look completely terrible when you look at them in Unreal, which is great because uh, we'll, we'll see how we light this stuff. So let's see who we have here. Federico, thank you so much. So beautiful images, thank you. And Peter's here, everybody. Hi, <laughs> how's it going, Peter? So, uh, okay, so let's uh, so let's get going. So we just open up Unreal, and you can see, like, this is literally what we have at the moment. 
not very exciting. So we have to make this look good. So usually when I'm lighting, I'll set up um, a dual layout. And let me just close this because this starts to really eat at my resources. And um, okay, that, that is fine. So let's just take a look over here. It's the shot here. Okay, there we go. So I'll just um, adjust this a little bit and we'll start lighting this. Just give me one second. So I have a few, so I had originally started um, lighting this, this piece. And when I did, the mask was in a completely different position. So I have a few lights, the, it's the orange ones, which means that I'm assuming that means that there are spawnable lights only for this one shot. So I'm gonna use these guys. Um, and the key, that, is to try to light it without over illuminating it. Just make it really feel nice and dramatic. And that's what we're gonna try to do. So uh, there's not a lot of rules to lighting, but the one rule that is definitely there for me is never, ever, ever, ever light it from the front. So it always has to be from the, from the back, three quarters, or from the side. So let's bring this up here. Okay, so that's good. We have one side looking pretty good and now the next side. It's this over here. We need to be careful with this light because the guy gets in front of it and it'll cast a really nasty shadow. So I'm gonna bring, I, I wouldn't want it from the front anyway. So I'm gonna bring it over here to the side, and rotate it. And you kind of have to pick what side you want your master light to come from, key light. On mine, it's gonna be this one. So this one here will be much more dim. I'll rotate this back like that. Okay, I'm gonna soften some of these shadows, so I'll just go to my source radius and just soften it a little bit. Um, let's see what have so I'm gonna bring in another one more from the side and this one I'll bring down quite a bit and since that's a duplicate I'm gonna come in here and convert to spawnable This one, I'm not sure what that one is, so let's get rid of it. Duplicate this guy, point him down. And I just wanna put some cool light coming down from above, and let's set that to blue. Let's 
transition. All right, so what I do want also is I want there to be a light coming from the back here. And I'm just going to bring up the volumetric intensity here. There we go. Bring that in like that. Obviously, that's too strong, but I'd rather start really strong with it and then tone it down. And um, let's grab that uh, radius. So I'll bring down the volumetrics a little bit. Five. Uh, and let's duplicate it, move it over here. I'll set that to like three. And I'll set this one to three. So let's get both of those lights, and I'm going to stick them in my sequencer, and set them to convert to spawnable. I'm going to save. Before I do that, I've had a, a few issues when converting to spawnable that craps out. So just want to make sure that's not an issue here. Okay, let's... Take a look at uh, let's turn on our letterbox. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see once he steps into the shot, that blue kind of dies. And unfortunately, in the edit, this really kicks in right here. So it doesn't look very interesting once that happens. So we need to figure that out. So I'm going to move this over to the side here. And let's find that blue light, which is this one here. Uh, I want to look at this light over here for a second. I just want to see what would happen if I made that more blue. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to come over here. Uh, so this is it here. So let's call this, I have a second monitor, by the way, or else uh, I can't work with one monitor. And unfortunately, I can't stream both of it. But um, 
it's not that interesting. It's just my sequencer, really. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. But uh, okay. So I just want to play with the depth of field settings now. So let's. Uh, Let's take a look at some stuff. So I might push this from 35 to something longer, maybe like that. Uh, my aperture, bring it down. And when I do that, um, I'm going to turn off these lights again. I think I, I put too many lights all at once. So I'm just turning them off. Uh, that's world. Okay, so that's that guy. Okay, so we're back to that, which is good. So let's do our blue light first. So he comes in. I mean, the shadow is gonna get in the way. That's just how it is. I could put it on a different uh, lighting channel, but I think uh, I think it's gonna be fine. Okay. So there's that one. Let's go to this guy here. Let's turn that on. And maybe what I'm going to have to do is bring him a little bit in more to the front and side. Okay, let's turn on this guy. I don't think he's too bright. Something more like that. And let's see this guy here. So this guy, I'm going to set him back to orange, which is my rim light. Okay. And these volumetric lights, I'm going to just tone them down a little bit. So it feels like the depth of field is in a really weird spot where it gets really chattery. Uh, so I just need to adjust these settings. All the depth of field I'm eventually just going to redo in um, but I, I, I want to get it a little bit better here. Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in on the 80. So let's do that here. So the longer the lens, the more shallow depth of field I would have. So I'm going to try it with an 80 foot 
push back a little bit and then adjust my focus. So that looks better. Now I want to crank this guy up, which is my rim light. So I'll set this to 100. And I want to try something. What would happen if I change this volume metric back here? Made this one a little bit more blue. Uh, let's grab this guy and make that guy a little bit more. So I'm going to bring down the saturation amount. I don't like that. I think that looks better, though. Let's take a look. OK, so let's go to our first frame. We'll add a transform uh, key. And then here we'll just push in just a little bit, add another transform key. So we'll have a slow push in. So let's go to this here we'll add a focus distance key I'll do that over here So I want this to be out of focus here on the sides. Uh, so that's good. And then let's move through it. Still want to maintain that. All right, so let's take a look. So the flickering is our light function. And then we would cut right there. Let me save this just in case. Let me see if anybody's asked something. Are you guys going to be showing the new process as well from Peter? Yes, 100%. Uh, I've just been working on that. Um, getting the pipeline down. And I think I got it pretty well. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely get into that. Uh, Nuke is my favorite tool. So what frames per second would you be getting if you were in real time lit mode? Probably not a lot. Um, I don't, I forget where the, there it is. So yeah, like 10 frames per second, 16 frames per second, Wolfie, 17, not terrible. So, um, okay, let's see. Miguel once curated my project with lighting from the front, and now he hates lighting from the front. Yes. No, that one, that was the only time of, of all time that I've ever thought the lighting should be from the front. Uh, what should I learn as a beginner? Well, the good thing about being a beginner is you have to learn everything. So everything. <laughs> uh, everything is, is something to learn. So uh, depends what you want to do. Um, 
right now we're doing everything, but uh, you should pick whether you want to be a modeler, an animator, uh, maybe just a filmmaker. Maybe you don't even want to uh, learn the technical stuff. There's a, a student at Noman right now that just wants to do previs, and uh, all her stuff is storyboards, animated. And they're really awesome. So I'm liking this a lot more. Uh, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat some stuff. So I, I kind of wanted to, let me just see something. I'm, I'm going to mess with the camera just a, a tiny bit here. See what I originally had, so I had actually, I'll show you guys what, what this originally looked like in a second. Um, I had a different shot, different angle, but I had to change it because once we did the motion capture, the actor didn't land in the same, the actor being me, didn't land in the same exact spot as where I had originally laid out um, the mask. I think it's right here. Yeah, and you can see one of the things that I really liked about it, I actually like the new one better, but one of the things I liked about it a lot was how this light and the curtains in the back made the eyes look like they were glowing. I thought that was really cool. Um, that's what I've been trying to get, but um, being quite unsuccessful at it. But I want to see if there's a cheat I can do here. Like maybe if I grab... Um, one of these uh, lights here, I can illuminate the background. I mean, I think these volumetric lights are helping a little bit. Let me bring up the volumetric a, a little bit more on this guy. Kind of like that, that's fine. And on this guy, I mean, it is very theatrical lighting, but that's, I think that's my favorite type of lighting. Like, would this actually look like this if this was a, you know, a hut in an African village? Of course not, but who cares? It looks awesome. So, all right. So let's see. So now, right, I'm going to set this as my starting point. This is my out point. I'm going to save again because I crash all the time. And let's just render this out and put it into um, the time into the timeline in, in Premiere. So I'm just going to kick this off to render. So that it is pick up, uh, let's go mask, uh, hero, renders. So I'll just create a folder called temp5. So they're all temp until I render the final EXRs. And we'll just kick that off, render local. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So it'll take a moment. So that, that's partially why I don't worry. Um, Wolfie in, ter in terms of the frames per second, because you ultimately have to render it anyway. And even if it says 15 frames per second inside of the viewport, it's not going to be 15 frames per second when you do the final render. So it'll be a couple of minutes. So it doesn't really matter to me that much. I guess the only thing that matters is the performance hit that you get while you're in the viewport. Um, Colors look a little bit different. Depth of field looks a lot softer. I could tell right away. Um, that's another issue that I've been that I've been noticing in Unreal Five is what I see in the viewport does not always necessarily line up to um, to what I get in the final render in terms of the depth of field. 
So I'll show you a workaround for that in a second, but let's just kick this off. Um, does anybody have any questions while that, that renders? No? Okay. So once that's done, we'll just come in here and we'll just swap out that one shot for that one and see what it looks like. So you can see what I mean, we're at like frame seven. So, oh, the GPU crashed. The trend, you should take over. So let me just render this. Uh, okay, let me take screen. over. Yeah. Uh, give me one second. Try and do something that's not working. And this is partially, I just have way too many things open. Like I have Premiere open, I have uh, Maya okay. open. I need to just reduce all this stuff. Okay, so can Unreal make render passes? Some render passes. So it could do crypto mats, it could do velocity, it could do a few, but not uh, not as many as I would have liked. So anyway, so this is going to crap out right now as soon as I press OK. Um, and there, there it goes. It crashes. So Tran is going to take over, and I'll come back in a minute, okay? Go for it, Tran. Okay, so, uh, oops. all right, so what I've been doing for the is the same stuff, so I didn't have anything new to say. Uh, the ceremony has a lot of extras, um, and there's a lot of cloth simulation and little extra little modeling tasks to do. So I've been doing a lot of cloth sim um, and shop modeling because a lot of the models need to be re-sculpted in order to have the cloth sim correctly. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Um, now this week I've jumped back onto working on the interior of the cave hole. So you've seen the exterior, right? The, of the little hole, the cave pit. Um, and she, we will have a part in the story where she's falling inside. I already done the wide shot. Uh, I can load it up very quickly just to show you what the wide looks like here. And let me pull up the sequence of this. Uh, Right, so it looks something like this. Um, and you can see Koa's up here. So I talked about that a few weeks ago. Um, I decided to just separate the closer part. We wanna have like a bunch of scenes happening up around this region. And it doesn't make sense to just try to stuff that all into one level, cause that can get, you know, kind of hard to do that. So I've been working on the close up And this is what I have here. Um, as far as how I've been working, most of it's the same. Um, but I, we did start incorporating uh, new features like decals, which are pretty awesome. I don't have them working perfect, particularly when it comes to normal maps. Seems like I have these weird issues. I don't think it's user error, but we'll we'll talk about it. So you can see how this looks here. Let's break it down, then I'll talk about decals. So first, I laid out some rocks. Um, and then we had, I had a couple angles and she's not going to float in the air. So the next step for me is actually to place some vines for her to have, to hang on to. Uh, she's just floating in the air for now while I'm working out the environment around her. And here's just a couple angles, um, where you can see how this looks. The next thing I did was I built, uh, these vines, which I've, talked about in the past I'll probably do another pass on it uh, but you can see how it looks with the vines go back to that previous shot like that's a shot of our it's like the the lighting straight ahead that I actually think looks good so I, I, I like that when it's direct like that well yeah and the she's, thing is it makes it look ugly but sometimes that's a good thing yes yeah so any case, this is not fully lit. It's more building, and Miguel is going to go in and change the line however he wants. But I do have to get this to look better. Um, so this is how it looks with the vines. Now, if you look at some of the previous streams, we had like this gooey, uh, kind of gross stuff 
which is, you know, just evil looking <laughs> slime, uh, kind of bloody looking. And it's a little bit tricky to try to do that, um, customize, right? Because all these rocks are, are mega scan assets. And basically, you know, one, one approach is to export all this, retexture all the goo, customized, and that would take a long time. Um, what Unreal has is that's pretty awesome is something called decals. Now decals are actors. So if I show you here, um, you can see I have a few, right? Let me just jump back to this camera. You can turn them back on. And I'll show you how they work. Uh, they're pretty amazing and not difficult to make, but they make a huge difference in our pipeline. So let me just hide this. And let's just come outside the hole, which is what this looks like right here. Um, you go to our actors. Right. Find decal, which is somewhere here. Decal actor. And I just place this on top. And you can see there's a texture here. And there's a bounding box, right? So anything outside that box uh, doesn't receive any projections. This is basically like a, a texture projection. Um, I can rotate it, you know, let's say if I want to project this, whatever on this asset right here. You know, I can rotate it and you can see how that works. Now, um, this is some weird default thing, texture that's already embedded in here. Uh, but you actually want to create your own material and place it in here where it says decal material. And the material is also pretty simple to make. So let's just say, I let's go into my folder here. Let's go into decal. I'm just going to create a demo folder so it doesn't get mixed up with my other stuff. Um, I'll just create a material for master. So I'll just call this master demo. And right away, I'm going to make a material instance because that's the actual material you want to apply onto the decal actor. And I'll just call this instance. OK, so all you have to do to create the material for a decal in particular is you're going to select on this material. and where it says material domain, you want to change it to deferred decal. And then that will work. Right? Let me just save this. Um, now, at default, it doesn't have any slots for me to put anything in. right? So the next thing you have to do is you have to go to your blend mode and change it to translucent. And let's hit Save. And you can see now uh, I have base color, metallic, and all these things I can plug in. Uh, once I had this, I started plugging in textures. And this is where I'm starting to get some problems. Um, it has to do with the norm map, but we'll get into that. So I'm just going to create a vector, uh, a 3 vector, convert this to parameter, and let's just call this albedo. And let's plug this in here. And I'll just pick a color that kind of looks like uh, what I've been using. Right, so now I have my color here. Uh, as far as my metallic, you know, I just created these vectors here because they only have single channels, they don't have RGB channels. Convert that to a vector, just call that metallic. Uh, even if I don't want it to be metallic, I kind of still like to have that control. Let's make this spec. These specs should just be one. And then this one will be uh, roughness. And let's just plug that in here. OK, so let's just save this. And now if I look at my material instance, I have control um, for all these, right? I can change my, my roughness. Uh, my spec. Now, what I really need is a nice opacity map. Um, 
So let me pull, pull something up. Let me open up my content browser. And let me pull in a stain map. So these are all texture maps. They're not any kind of built-in map from, from Unreal. These are maps I export out of Substance Painter. And I'm just going to throw this over to here. And let's convert this to a parameter so that it can be swapped out. I'll just call this opacity uh, map. And I'm going to hit save. OK, so that's some of the basics here. Uh, now that I have that, I can replace the map. And let's come over here under my demo. Um, on this decal that I have selected right here, I'm just going to throw the material instance. I should save this. It's floating in air. That's why nothing's happening. Uh, and now I can see my stain being projected here. And I can come back here and I can adjust the color. Maybe it's too dark or something like that. Um, now, the other thing I did do was just give it some more color corrections, which I've you know talked about this in the past. But let's pull up um, this other master, so my final one, just so I can show you. Um, I didn't really need this. This is my color chain. I don't need it at all. I just have it there, right? Uh, because it's a flat color and making it brighter, darker, could just be all controlled here. So it's, this is overcomplicated. Um, but for the mask, I did need a couple of things. So what I have onto my mask opacity is I have a brightness control, which is being controlled by multiply. Um, I have a contrast, a cheap contrast. And then I have uh, the ability to tint it, uh, which I don't think I would really use this very much. And then I had an option um, to turn off the opacity map, right? Which, in case I don't want the map, which I probably won't use very often. Um, the next thing I did was I set up a tiling. But let me just copy this part here. And then paste it here. And I'll create a comment bo box. So I'll just hit C. Uh, and let me just call this opacity, just to organize this. And let's plug this map in here. Now, when I do this, I do want to group this. So my opacity map should sit in some kind of group so that they look organized in my material instance or also just sit randomly everywhere. And it makes it difficult to figure out what I'm doing. Um, these array have groups assigned because I pasted it from something else. But you can see here it says group uh, 0 to opacity. So numbering them is a good way to organize them, right? Let's hit save. Now, if I look at my material instance, I should have, uh, for some reason, I don't have anything. Capacity to. Let's try it again. Metallic roughness, I have all these here. I have my opacity map. Let me just close it. Oh, I'm stupid. I didn't plug it in. That's like the dumbest error. OK, let's save. So I have my chain. And of course, it doesn't read in my material instance if you don't plug it in. OK. So here, you can see now they're available. Um, these make a difference. Let me move my content browser. So if I now have this control, I can change the brightness. So you can see how I get you know, some more effects on this. I can change my contrast, um, again, which I don't see myself doing a lot of. And I could tint this, which kind of 
you know, makes it darker or lighter. Uh, but you can see how it's a little much stronger. Now, if I place this, I basically just grab this. And place this over my rocks. Let's kill this light. And just rotate it so it's facing the surface. I have a mouse problem. Well, I have a navigation problem in here. And I think I always will <laughs> have problems navigating in here. Okay. Pretty much just navigate like Maya. Maya's navigation is perfect. Yes. Uh, I don't think it would be possible if they build more modeling tools to actually model in here with their navigation. It's too difficult. Okay. So now you can see I have this stain, right? Um, it's probably too contrasted, but basically I could adjust my, my brightness here to make it more believable. Um, I can adjust my roughness to make it more wet or drier. Um, I don't need really need metallic, but then I can come back here and I, I can adjust my color, right, to get some kind of look. Now, um, that's basically that, it for that. Now, what's happening here, let's get out of this. Is that depth of field? And I don't want to see it blurry, but let's just see it sharp. Um, it's reading the norm map underneath, so I don't have any normal map slot, right? If you look back here under my master, uh, my norm map is empty like that. Uh, and it works fine. When it's empty, it just reads the surface underneath. So it just looks like it's, you know, picking up the, the rock detail. Now, I did try to actually insert a norm map, and it behaves really, really, really weird. So there's, there's several issues with it, um, aside from reading the surface. So if I just grab something here, let me just grab this, copy it, paste it. Right. And then let me replace this with a, a placeholder. Okay, here's one. And then let's just rename this so it doesn't get confused and not put in a group. All right, so now it's normal and it's flat. And of course, I expect it to look weird. What is the error? Uh, looks like I broke. Oh, crap. Master. Hold on. I'm actually not sure what I broke in here because it was totally fine. Ah, they were still connected. Um, this kind of happens a lot. Like if I duplicate a map, if I just do, like I, if I copy and paste this, uh, and if I don't change the name right away, it basically, whatever I do to this, like when I replace the other node, I probably did it without renaming it first, it gets confused. Um, it will just change it to the original one that I duplicated from. So that's what happened there. Let me just pull out a norm map here and convert this to parameter so it won't break. Let's connect that. So this is the issue I'm having. Um, I turn on a norm map. It actually looks fine. This is weird. 
Okay, so I guess it's totally fine. All right. Uh, I just got to go back and rebuild the material. It all looks fine now. I don't know. I was doing this during the stream when Miguel started, and maybe... Did it break? Maybe it just needed to be reloaded because <laughs> I left the map and I went back in. Uh -huh. And now it looks fine. Oh. But the Nora map kept not working, and I was like, why is it not working? But now it works. One of those? Yeah, so I was like going, why is this not working? And then when, as soon as I start streaming and I change the map, it's totally fine. Okay, so this works fine. Now I have a Nora map that looks all globby. Um, as far as how I am getting these maps, basically uh, what I have is Substance Painter. Uh, and I love Substance Painter. And I have a plane. Uh, in the plane, it's one whole entire UDIM. So, you know, you want to take up the whole UV space. Um, and I just grabbed the stains, and they're all procedural stains from Substance Painter. So if I go over to the Texture tab, and you type something like grunge, uh, you can see there's a ton right here, right? And I'm just applying it on top of the plane. Now, on top of the plane, I am also extracting a normal map, right? Let's turn this on, which looks like this. Uh, it also has a blur, because if I don't blur it, it looks really sharp. sharp. So I put a blur. And then I have six different maps like that. OK. So I just basically have the mask and the norm map uh, that is based on the mask itself with a slight blur on it. And it gives me this kind of look. Now, I'm still building it. I'm probably going to build, um, lay a second norm map on top, just so that it has some breakup. I don't have that working yet. Um, but now if I come back here, let's hide this one. You know, these are my current stains right now, which look, you know, it's kind of dark and evil. So that's where I'm at here. I'm probably going to tweak, um, continue tweaking the shader some more and I'm going to build, continue building, uh, build some vines for her so she's not in the air like this. She does need something to hang on to because she's not supposed to fall right in. But that's it for this. Okay. Um, I'm almost ready. I guess I'm ready. So this thing is uh, almost done rendering, uh, so we're at frame 82. But the minute this this uh, mask leaves the frame, I have to cut out. So um, we're pretty much done. Just give it a second here. Uh, I don't like this transition here between this piece and uh, the stand, but I don't think you're going to see that in the shot because of the aspect ratio, so I'm not that worried about that. Let's give it a second. Depth of field seems like it's working much nicer in here. Uh, motion blur looks really nice too. So I'm liking all of that. And this is with really basic settings, so it'll only look better once we do our final renders. So really, I should cut right here, but I'm going to give it a few more frames. So 92, maybe go up to like 94, and then I'll, I'll cancel out of here. See, the background looks really nice, the, the bokeh effects. That's fine. So I'm just going to hold down escape and try to get out of this. And then we'll move on to the next shot.
All right, there we go. Great. Let's minimize Unreal and open up Premiere. So I love Premiere. So there's our old shot. Um, so let's just go to File Import. Ceremony, it's a, my mask hero renders six. There you are. Uh, this happens for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, I sometimes have to import it twice in order for it to read it as an image sequence. It's been happening lately. It didn't happen before, which is really weird. So there you go, and out. So let's cut right there. Okay. Cut that. And we don't want this to last any longer than it needs to, so. That's it. So let's just take a look at those shadows. I wish they were a little bit softer. I mean, they are coming from candlelight, which would be technically a hard shadow. I might soften them a little bit still. What do you think, Trent? I think it's slightly softer. I'm also going to scale it down a little bit, which is, again, why I'm rendering it at a higher resolution. So I could scale it down just a tiny bit. Let's come over here. I might move this. And like that. Um, all right, so let's take a look at how that plays. All right, so let's see. So we have this orange light coming in from the side. Okay, that's good. That works with that. Is there a total lighting continuity? Of course not. There would never be if you go and you look at a lot of films. It's all a bunch of cheats. Maybe I could put a little bit of fill back here, um, but I don't really want to. I like it being silhouetted and I like that it feels almost like devil horns. Um, obviously this image of the horns is a very important symbol since it's literally represents like the tree and the mask and the altar. Uh, so it's uh, pretty important. I think that looks pretty good. So let me just take a look at it again. So let's see where that light is coming from and see if we can soften up the shadows a little bit. It's just not very interesting to watch me render. Um, and that's what I'm a little bit afraid of. So let's save all. So we'll come right around here. Okay, so now I just have to figure out which light this is. I've reduced the amount of lights. So there you go, it's that one right there. So I could just go into my source radius. soften it a little bit. I think that looks better. Yeah, it definitely looks better. All right, I'm not going to re-render that. I'll render it off uh, screen for next week, but that works much better for me. So let's, um, you can see I saved 
too much, but uh, let's go on to the next shot. So, um, the next shot is this one here. She kneels down and she's given this thing. So I don't have the final animation for Allah, which is the girl, but we could start kind of figuring out the lighting anyhow. So there's a few problems that we're gonna have with this. Problem number one is that a lot of the stuff that this guy's wearing might completely block this entire mask, which is something that I'm a little bit afraid of. Uh, this camera is set up in Maya, so it'll be easy to bring it into Unreal. So let's just start doing that. So I'll save this in here. Let me just look at this one more time. Nice, nice. Oh, one more thing. Let's put our color corrections on here. So I, right now I'm just using this Film Convert Pro that is giving it this uh, grain and softness. I like it. All right, so let's move on. So let's go to this one. So, uh, because my computer's crapping out, I'm going to save this and close it. And I am going to have to open up um, Maya again, which I hate to do while I have Unreal and the stream because um, it doesn't seem to handle it very well. But I'll show you. I've shown this all before, but bringing in the cameras. So, um, In. Okay, let's go to camera number three. There we go. Okay, so this camera, I rough it in in Maya, but I know I'm going to change it in Unreal. But I like a lot of it. So I'll just go to view, select camera. I'm going to give it a little bit of life here also. I don't like that it's kind of like dead here. It's a little too dead, but I'm probably not going to use any of the time here. I'm probably going to start the shot right there. You always want to start the shot right before something I mean, I hate to make it sound like this is like a set rule, but I personally want to try to get it. You want the shot to start as late as possible, right? You don't want to drag it out. So right when this enters the frame is where I want to uh, start the shot, right? I don't want to just drag it on here. Although, if it's a shot of her expression and seeing how she's feeling about this moment, this could work really well. So I could add that, push out. I don't like that transition there. So I'm gonna delete this. So she would be looking up and uh, I'd like Better. Let's bring it into Unreal and see. So view, select camera, file, export, um, selection. So we'll go to our folder that has the shot. So it's mask on. So I have a folder called cameras. And let's just call this mask on cam. Okay, we're exporting it as an FBX. Animation, export. So it's 
it's a funny thing this camera export sometimes it it exports it in like a second and then sometimes it'll export it in a few minutes it, it really is weird so that's it uh i'm just gonna save this you know what since i know i'm gonna come back to this uh well it's fine let's just close this i was gonna leave it open but probably not a good idea so save this and i'm gonna close maya again or else uh, my unreal will crap out So let's go back over here. So we're good with this one. So, um, so now I have to think which shot do I want to, I don't have anything set up in Unreal for this shot yet. So I could use one of my existing shots to basically become like the beginning of the new shot that I'm about to do. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna use ceremony because it's kind of like the generic one. So I'll duplicate this and I'll call this mask on, okay? And let's just double click this. So I do not, every single shot is it's a complete separate uh, animation level sequence. I do not uh, use the same ones over and over and like edit in Unreal at all. So, um, I'm going to simplify this scene big time. So there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't need. Okay. So you can see right now my sequencer has nothing. Uh, I'm going to create a new camera, right click import. So mask on cameras turn off match by name only or else it will not import okay so you can see here that there's already keyframes so let's set this to like 600 you can see that a lot of this is actually happening over here and that's because our sequence in Maya was actually in a completely different place. So it's more like this here. Okay. So you can see it does not look very good at the moment. Ray. So let's do R dot ray tracing. Two sided geometry to zero. You can see that'll get rid of that ugly stuff on the floor. Okay, so what is this here? So that's our priest master. So, okay. So let me go to my Alembics. And I'm going to create a new folder in here. We'll call this mask on. One second. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab. Um, my kneel shot. And I'll drag them in here. So this is not the final animation for for Ala, but at least she'll be kneeling. So we could start framing her. I mean, yeah, so we're, we're doing this shot from almost from, from zero, which is kind of cool. Okay. So she's in there. We'll 
we'll set that to zero. There you go. We'll put them into our sequencer. Okay, so we could immediately see a few things. One, the image is way too bright. Uh, our focal distance is completely screwed. So we'd want something more like that. This one here. Let me save this. This is uh, this guy picking up the mask. So I actually need to go back into... Um, you know what I'll do? I'm just gonna. I am using him on multiple shots, so I'll just drag him in here, and I'm gonna hide him here because I don't want to see him in this shot. Okay. When you gave me the alembic for the priest, it was just, it's just one alembic for the whole thing, right? Uh, the clothing is always separate. Yeah, I know, but it's the entire sequence, right? It should be for the clothing. I didn't give you alembic for the body of the priest. Yeah, okay. So maybe what I'm going to do here, I'll go back to frame one. And I just want to see what I have here. So that looks kind of weird to me. Like it doesn't feel like they're lining up where I would want them to line up. So, all right, so let's take a look at that and see what it is. So we'll do a, a split here. And I'm gonna move him over like so. And uh, key the transform. Okay, let's get the mask. Let's paste the position there. Take a look at that over here. You can see he's floating. I know that, um, which is fine. As long as it looks cool in the shot, that's all that I care about. So, okay, so the camera is not killing me here. Let's call this uh, mask on cam. Frame zero. We'll make that our last uh, frame of the sequence. So it looks very ugly. So, all right. So let's uh, let's fix this. So for starters, I'm hating the just the movement in general. So I'm just going to delete all the movement. Um, 
I'm going to just set this back to a single layout for a moment. And let's kind of get a nice angle here. I'm going to set my camera speed to be one. Okay, so it's about her, it's not about the priest. So I want to make sure that that's the focus. Okay. So let's just look around and see what we find. I like that fire in the background. So if we could keep that, that would be cool. I may have to cheat her and raise her up a little bit and hope that no one notices. Um, so for now, when, once I'm like, okay, this is okay, I'll just set a keyframe just in case it, it pops. And what I'll do here is I'll just grab, grab her and just pull her up. It's a total cheat, of course. But since you don't see her feet, you might be able to get away with it. Okay, so that's the, the frame to light to, right, right around here. Um, God, I wish I could get a better angle of the mask. Let's, let's get rid of this, this over here. Let's throw that in there. And since I moved them, I have to copy that over to the clothing as well. You can see the clothing completely covers <laughs> everything. Uh, is that that's what you were talking about, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> um, maybe just. Just some sleeves or something. Yeah, so I'm going to not worry about that drape for now because, uh, yeah, holy crap, that messes us up big time. So let's just get the lighting in here. So whenever I'm lighting, like I've said a million times, just I always turn on my two camera, my two uh, views, and I'll just uh, get out of cinematic mode on one of them. Okay, you can see this light is like moved up. This should not be brought up. This is probably something that I did on um, one of the other shots that I probably forgot to key and now it's, it's messing this one up. Um, so that has, to be, that has to be fixed. So let's put that back into the shot, into the fire pit correct. So that's, that's good. All right, so let's get some lighting in here. Uh, I'm gonna save. And let's go to our light. And I always light with spotlights, and that's not gonna change. 
So let's just come over here and nuke her with this orange light. You can see same rules as always. We're lighting from the back to the front. Never the front first. Never the front unless you absolutely have to. But uh, you light from the back to the front. All right. So let's give her. that I'm going to bring up the volumetric intensity just a little bit. Let's tint it orange because it's coming from the fire. Okay. Let's bring it up. Let's bring it around her. Let's bring up the intensity. All right, great. So now we'll just come over here, go to our light functions. I'll just come over here. We have a bunch of light functions here. So flicker dramatic, anything that says dramatic in it. Sounds good to me. So let's throw that in there. So now we have our flicker. Okay. Cool. So now let's grab another light. So let me grab that one light that I just created, throw it into my sequencer right away. And I don't want this to contaminate another shot. So convert to spawnable right away. Okay, let's keep this pretty nice and clean. I'm going to duplicate that light, rotate it, and let's hit her with it from the side front. Okay, so there's another fire coming from here. So I could try to use that as a cheat to get some light on the side here and illuminate her, um, her head a bit. And that's got the flicker as well. What I'll do here is so that they don't flicker exactly the same. I'll just throw a different light function on it. Okay. And let's drag that light into my sequencer. Sorry. And right click convert to spawnable. All right, let's duplicate that light. So now we're creating our three point lighting. I don't know if I'm gonna actually have all three points. I think I'm just gonna have two uh, main ones and the third one doesn't wouldn't really fall under a three point lighting rule, but I'm just gonna hit it from directly above like so. And I'll do that with blue light. I'll try to bring down my cone angle, kind of focus that a little bit more. The 
Let's drag that into our sequencer. Right click, convert to spawnable. Let's save this. Save, 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 save. Okay. So now that mask. How do we make that mask stand out? I don't know. I don't know. It looks like the angle would never work with any kind of clothing unless he had like no clothes. Maybe he just gets completely naked for the shot. <laughs> All he right, just, let's... like takes his clothes off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's 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 play around with that because I I, I kind of agree with with what Tran is saying. I just don't think it's gonna work. So let's just try to find another angle. Maybe just completely backlit with the fire in the back it could look cool so long as we don't give away that she she and he are floating in the air. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just snap on, like reset my um, my pivot to something that's close by. Because the thing about these Alembic files that I freaking hate is that they they have um, their pivots are 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 set to zero, so it's impossible to use it as a selection. Ooh, that looks pretty good there. So let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna set a keyframe there. I don't want that any longer. The thing is, you can see when I do that, the guy just totally does not reach. So I might have to cheat this, bring that like that. It's still going to get blocked by some of that clothing, though, isn't it? So let's uh, set a keyframe on their positions. And it's actually fine. It's just uh, I have a, an extra keyframe here that shouldn't be there. Same thing there. Um, Okay, so let's try that one more time, like that, like that. Let's set our keyframes. I don't know why that's happening for the mask just offset. So let me see what is going on here. So I'm copying that. That's fine. Grabbing this mask and it is moving. Uh, 
That's super weird. Transform, transform. And then the guy just... Uh... All right, let's try it the other way. Let's grab that, copy. All right, that's weird. Well, it works now. So let's hide. Um, okay, pretty cool. Okay, so now I really want a light that's gonna just showcase this mask here. So I have this one here. And I may have to duplicate it. So let's take a look. Trying to get that mask to pop out a little bit. And I might, let me just try something. It's a little bit ballsy and it might completely look like a hack, but that's okay. I'm a hack. So let's figure this out. Let's bring this down. I have to soften the radius on that big time or else it'll look completely contrived. But the idea is that uh, I just have a light that's just going to basically illuminate that face. The face meaning the, the mask. Okay, so I kind of like that shot so far, but now let's make it a little bit more complex. So this is where we want to end up for sure. But where do we want to start? So let's go back over here. I don't know, again, if this is going to work because of the fabric, but let's just see. Let's, uh, let's plop on the, the fabric just to see what it does. Ah, that that little dingly bit. Is this the thing that you you rendered one without this, right? Yeah. Okay, not rendered the lumbic cache because you knew that was going to be a problem. Well, yeah, I didn't think about the rest of it, but I thought that would be something. The cape, I'm fine with. I actually think it looks cool, but I I, I think those dangly bits. Um... Yeah. So you should have a version that doesn't have it. All right. So let's save this. That's a huge, 
huge alembic file too, right? Yeah, but it's not so it's not so bad. So I'm gonna just go to track, actor hidden in game, and I'm gonna hide the clothing for this one shot. So, um, I gotta import this alembic file. So before I do that, I think I probably just did it anyway, but just out of habit, I'm just gonna make sure that I completely saved uh, again. Uh, let's go into our M, where the hell was this thing? Okay, there it is. So no tassels. All right, so we're ringing an alembic file, so skeletal mesh, no compression, skip empty frames, find materials, rotation 90 degrees. It doesn't crash. Let's give it a second. Takes a moment. These Alembic files are gigantic. So you can see we even though we had kind of laid out the, the camera in Maya, you can't really commit to anything until you see it inside of Unreal. go. Let's give it a second. All right, so let's just grab that. So no tassels, throw it in there. Throw it into our sequencer. to spawnable. I'm going to link up the animation. Let's take a look. So here she actually looks like she's uh, might be too high now. So we can bring this, we could bring him up actually.
Something is slipping there. Remember, we don't have um, animation on her yet, so it'll look much, much better once we do have that. So let's, uh, let me just find my shader for the clothing. Just throw that on there. Nice, let's get rid of this. All right, so let's see if we could get that camera angle to look a little bit more graphic. Need that clean um, silhouette. I really like that fire in the background, so I don't want to lose that. Let's just uh, let's just explore. Maybe it's uh, it's this way. have to adjust some of the fingers. Oh, there's something cool about that there. I kind of wanted to see her expression though as she gets it. You know, that looks kind of nice too. I don't like that. Uh, something is up with the hands and the mask, so I'll have to address that. So let me... Um, okay. So... I'll grab her now. Let's move her in position. I know she's going to be looking up a little bit, so I'm not uh, so worried about how she looks right now. So I'll have her head start to look up. I like the possibilities of this one. Um, we gotta put some, some guys back here. So let's take a look at a few things. So this volumetric needs to be brought down or it just needs to be brought out of the camera so that uh, we can't tell where it's coming from. So I'll just probably move it slightly off frame, rotate it like so. Let's 
try to get that rim light back in there. Now that I know that I can't see it, get it closer. Okay, so that's it right there. It's off the side, so it's uh, coming from the fire. Let's see what else we have here. I really like these little torches here. Uh, I may have to offset them a little bit, which is fine. Um, okay, so let's try to get more of a rim light on the priest. Uh, let me see. Let me see where this blue light is coming from. Okay, so that looks good there. What is this one here? So there's a second one. Okay, so let's grab this light. I'm going to duplicate it. Rotate it over here. I kind of want this just to um, illuminate that monk a little bit. We want no volumetric influence here, so I'm going to set that to zero. And let's grab that light. this All right let's take a look Uh, I'm a little suspicious as to the placement of some of these things. Okay. Okay, so this guy, something looks weird here. So this looks off here. Uh, the hands just didn't look like they lined up with uh, the mask anymore. Okay. Uh, let's uh, just come over here. I'm going to grab one of these small fires and I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to stick it back here. I don't want you to see the fire, but I want you to see the embers. OK. 
Okay. Drag that into my sequencer. Let's save. Converts is spawnable. You know what? I like that so much that I'm going to just have a second one there. Convert to spawnable. Third one. No one's keeping a uh, tab of, uh, of torches, so we can stick another one back there. Convert to spawnable. I just want those embers in the background. Okay, so these look a little bit too stacked for me. Let's just grab that. I, I hate group uh, actors because it they they sometimes crap out. So I'm just going to add a transform node just to offset them so they're not so stacked together. So I know her head is going to rotate up here, so I'm not so worried about that. Um, that looks pretty cool. So now what I usually do is I'll kind of like blur my eyes and try to make sure that the values are darkest in the foreground and lighter in the background. And if they're not, I'm just going to increase the volume metrics in the background. And what I might actually do is this. I might actually set the volume metrics on this to zero. So that we have that nice um, rim light on her. Then I'm going to duplicate this light and not have it cross her. And I'll just push it off to the side and bring up the volume metrics on that so that her blacks maintain that richness. Stronger silhouette. Uh, let's save that. Let's grab that light, drag it into our sequencer, convert to spawnable. So going back to this one that we set the volumetrics to nothing, I'm going to bring them back in at like one so that there's some uh, fog going in the foreground. But you can see that her silhouette reads much clearer than it did a, a moment ago. All right, so, so far I'm liking all of this. And I'm not concerning myself about static lights or any of that stuff at the moment. I don't care about optimization of anything. Right now I'm just trying to make something that looks pretty and then I'll figure all that stuff out later. So focal length, we have it set at 80. I'm going to, what I'm going to probably do, okay, let's keep it at 80. So I know the shot will be right here. It'll start right there. So I'm going to set that as my endpoint. I'll go to my camera, transform. Um, as you see, that's kind of problematic because of our aspect ratio. Kind of sucks. So what I might have to do
pull back just enough. Don't mind that, actually. OK. So I'm going to set my um, manual focus distance. Let's get it right. Let's set this back to a single. It's the most annoying thing in the world, this uh, letterbox. Okay. I'm going to very gently position that. So I will have to move him one more time. That's okay. I'll do that later. Just uh Okay. All right, so camera positions will start right there. That's fine. And in the beginning of the shot, we will push out. Nope, too much. Just like that. We'll set our camera. So linear here, so our translations are no easing in or easing out. All right, so let's go to frame one here. So what I'll do is I'll just completely set my camera aperture to zero. And that's going to show like all the, it's going to show you all the depth of field that as high as set uh, value as possible so you can see it makes everything brighter but this is how i usually dial in my depth of field so now i'm going to go in there and just make sure that whatever i want to be in focus is in focus you can see the edge is much cleaner here okay manual focus distance set it come over here to the last frame Annual focus distance, set a key. And now we can set our aperture back to 1.7. Okay. Um, and that's it for this week. So we have this guy. Uh, I definitely think this side shot is going to be the one. I got to put a couple of dudes back here. Um, the tribe guys back there. I have a few that are kind of kneeled down that I think would work really well back here. So we'll stick those in there. I'm loving this guy here. Uh, Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I lost some of the torches, so I might move them up just for this uh, shot. Okay, but it looks pretty. Let 
me see if there's any questions. There's no questions. So, yeah, if anybody has any questions, now is the time. If not, um, I'll see you guys next week. Let me just let's just take one quick look at where we're at. So we'll open up Premiere one more time. So let's take a look. And that's the shot we were just doing right now. She storms off. And there you go. So no one's asking any questions, so I'm going to assume there's no questions. So I will. See you guys next week. Thanks uh, again for tuning in. Thank you. Most of our views are not live. They're after the fact. So um, if anybody has any questions after the stream, just make sure you uh, put them in the question box. I primarily check the, the YouTube uh, questions. So if anybody has any questions that they want me to answer after the fact, just ask on YouTube and I'll, I usually respond to everybody. So, yeah, thank you so much, and we'll see you guys um, next week. Take care.